Does anyone want to explain to me why diesel prices are not going down? What's going on? What's going on, Joe? What's going on? Another thing. Why do truck drivers like to block these lanes? Like, it's one thing to go in there and use the bathroom, but your whole break, 30 minutes? Listen, you see the thumbnail, you see the title, so you already know. Y'all already know. But listen, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, if you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel again. My name is Jeff Joseph, and uh, I'm OTR right now. This might be my last load OTR for a couple of days because I'm so close to New Orleans, I may as well just take a little break. But uh, I've been I've been on the go, y'all. I've been moving, moving and grooving. But uh, I picked up a load in the DMV area, and uh, but what had happened was I ended up taking a load that brought me all the way to Baltimore, Maryland, dropped that load off, uh, picked up another load that was a local load early in the morning, it was like seven o'clock in the morning that was going closer to the inside the DMV area, close to the DC um, for a couple of hundred dollars. It took me all of maybe an hour and a half to do. And while I was dropping that load off, my dispatcher found another load that was leaving out of the area less than 15 minutes away from my, from where I used to live uh, from the drop-off area too so I picked that load up which is the load that I'm on right now and it's coming out here I'm actually already here to Tallahassee Florida right so this load was paying 250 a mile there was virtually no deadhead because it was only 15 minutes away from where I was um, which, so it actually worked out because the load that I picked up earlier in the day actually brought me closer to the DMV area. Well, in the end of the DMV area, uh, actually in College Park where I used to live, I used to attend graduate school in uh, the DNC, the DMV area. Uh, shout out to Howard University. I'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, so it brought me closer to the DMV area and I was able to pick up the load less than 15 minutes from the drop off of the first load. and like maybe all of like seven miles away. So virtually no deadhead, pick the load up, uh, got the chill for the rest of the day, head on down here to Tallahassee the next day, uh, which I got here last night. And now I'm just chilling because my drop off is not until 6 p.m. This is actually the same load, same company, same companies rather, uh, that I did when I was out in LA. I don't know if y'all remember that. I didn't really talk too much about the load itself but it was going to Alta Beauty. I guess they remodeled all their stores across the country. And so uh, the construction crew is not gonna be there until 6 p.m. Um, so I kinda gotta wait around for the construction crew to get there so they can take this load off my hands and they can do their job and I can get on out of here. But what I'm gonna do is I am going to Amazon to New Orleans uh, once I leave here. So. I already got that little book too. If you wanna know about that? Let me know because I may not even show that little <laughs> because it's Amazon, right, y'all? Y'all get the picture with Amazon, but um, yeah. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm about to go get me something to eat, and then once I get me something to eat, once I eat, I'm probably gonna head closer to where I need to be, and then I'll run it with y'all about what it's been like having a new authority. So yeah, real quick, since I'm back here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all. I started recording. Uh, getting loaded up. Oh, my baby just texted me. She loved me. She must have knew I was talking about her. But uh, I started recording getting loaded up, and she told me to stop filming, just wait until after to take a picture. She didn't want to be on camera. I was like, cool, you know, whatever. Usually I ask people before I start recording, um, but I didn't ask this time, and she <laughs> she stopped me. So 
gonna go ahead and open this up and I'm gonna show y'all the logo real quick just so y'all can see. Uh, Cause I know a lot of people like to actually see the logo, so just give me one second. All right, so voila. <laughs> This is the logo, like I said, it's going to Ulta Beauty. Uh, it is a lot of shelves, a lot of uh, shelves, really. I think that's all it is in this logo. Uh, it was actually supposed to be two trucks. Um, the first truck, the logo got rejected because it didn't fit uh, on this truck. I don't I don't know why it didn't fit, but it didn't fit on this truck. Um, so this is half the load, which I don't know why they didn't give me the whole load, but they gave me half the load, whatever. Uh, I actually leaned that up against the wall myself, so for those of you wondering, it didn't, didn't tilt over. I just wanted to make sure that nothing broke in transit, but, but this is it. So like I said, um, I'm about to go ahead and get me something to eat, and I'll run it with y'all in a second. Check out this B-roll. Alright y'all, so what has it been like being a new authority, right? A lot of people ask this question, a lot of people want to know, um, is it hard to get loads with a new authority? And the answer is yes, <laughs> it can be, um, it can be very stressful, uh, but it actually, to be honest, in retrospect, looking back at the whole situation, it wasn't that bad. Um, I feel like there were some challenging moments where we couldn't really get any loads in the first 30 days. There were times where uh, the truck was stuck in certain areas uh, because for one, I didn't know better and I didn't have the best dispatcher. So I was in dead areas like Denver, Colorado, for example, um, it's a dead area. And um, so having a new authority, plus being in an area where there's not a lot of freight moving, it was just a bad situation. So I had to dead head out of there. Uh, uh, but for the most part, um, I was able to get loads, whether I got the loads or my dispatcher, whoever I was dispatching with at the time, got the loads. We were able to get loads. Now, were the loads the best loads? No, they weren't that great of loads. Um, but we were able to to actually get loads. Uh, obviously, doing Amazon Relay, you could do Amazon Relay work from the jump from day one. As long as you meet their requirements, you can do Amazon Relay. Um, so you could make it work. Doing. So what am I saying? Am I saying it's impossible? No, it's not impossible. You can definitely find work with a new authority. There are actually plenty of brokers who will work with you um, with a new authority. And um, there's actually a, a link in the description below that's always been there. If you ever clicked on it, you'll see that they have some broker suggestions for people with new authority. Um, but you just have to you know, do some research and call around and find out what brokers are actually working with with new with carriers, with new authorities, and uh, they'll work with you. Um, it gets easier as you go, as you reach one of those milestones after 30 days, you can then, you know, have more access to different uh, brokers who will work with you. And um, after 60 days, obviously you'll have more. One thing I will say to add to uh, working with brokers is to have confidence when you're reaching out to them to make sure that you know your dimensions of your truck never refer to your truck as a box truck refer to your truck as a straight truck but also just know everything there is to know about your your truck and, uh, and i think being confident is the biggest thing because uh my first time calling um my first time calling for a low they asked me my mc number and i was like uh um it's a uh, one three five she was like it sounds kind of new i don't know and she cut me off she was like do you have 30 days and i was like no ma'am i'm just gonna start she's like well call back when you have 30 days click <laughs> so um you gotta have confidence um you gotta know not only your equipment know your mc and dot number by heart um you're gonna you're gonna learn it anyway but just make before you make the call make sure you know all the dimensions of your truck you know the length the width the height the height at the door um what what you can scale what you can't scale and um yeah, just know everything you need to know about your truck because they're gonna ask, they're, you're gonna need to know. Um, and you don't wanna have to go try to find, you don't wanna have to go and try to find out that information 
while you're on the call because then they're just gonna go to the next person. And I would also suggest that you fill out your carrier packets ahead of time. Call them, call around, find out who's working with new authorities and fill out the carrier packet um, ahead of time. So that way you don't have to worry about that whenever you see a load that they're running. Uh, and that's one less thing that you have to worry about because they go fast. These loads are quick, you gotta be quick. So you gotta make sure that you have everything lined up ready to go when they ask for it. But now your boy is actually um, 90 days now. So it's a new level, um, new opportunities to work with some more brokers who pay better and are, and are less sketchy. Um, so I'm excited to be, to have made it this far of my company. Um, we worked really hard to get here. Uh, was it very stressful? There were times where it was very stressful, yes. Um, there were times where it was very good as well. Um, you just gotta roll with it, you know, roll with the punches, don't get discouraged, and know that it's gonna be challenging times, um, and just prepare for that. And one of the ways you can prepare for it, if you can't get nothing else, you could always get Amazon Relay. So I wouldn't suggest that anyone depends on Amazon Relay uh, starting out. Uh, I guess it just depends on your area, whether or not you can get good loads, good high paying loads and good freight at good rates. Um, but that just depends on your area. But there's also so many other factors that make me not quick to say yes, depend on Amazon Relay for your first 30, 60 days because, uh, you know, Amazon Relay is very strict on, you know, being on time and uh, just there's a lot of different things that you can lose points for with Amazon Relay. And if you're depending solely on them, then, you know, depending on your work ethic, depending on your truck, depending on what, you know, anything could happen, uh, you might be screwed if you're depending solely on Amazon. But again, it just depends on your area and it depends on you, but it can be done. Now, again, just to reiterate that, yes, you know, there were some challenging times in the first 30 and 60 days, um, but would I do it all over again? Yes, I would do it all over again uh, because it wasn't that bad. Like I said, retrospect, you know, it were challenging times, but for the most part, you know, we made it. <laughs> we made it. Um, the things that I would do differently, I think I would wait until now to get started. I think now would be a good time to get started um, or at least closer to peak season because um, now you're starting to see the influx of rates. Again, I knew, and I talked about this in previous videos, I knew that I was starting the business in a slow season because I wanted the authority to be more seasoned when peak season did get here, that I think it was gonna be as challenging as it was. No, I didn't think it was gonna be this challenging. Um, but I think had I known what I know now, I would wait until about now or maybe uh, July to start. And another thing, if you're, you're using this video to determine whether or not you should or shouldn't start, your box trucking uh, business, I would also consider the fuel prices right now because it doesn't look like they're gonna change anytime soon, even though you know there's supposed to be some changes. It's not happening fast enough. So um, you can get by, but you're not making a killing. It uh, just depends on your goal, right? If your goal is to get out here and make a killing from the start, mm, you might wanna wait a little while to see what these gas prices are gonna do. But if you wanna build a sustainable business, you wanna build you know, a machine, a well oiled machine that's gonna pay dividends in the future, then sure, get started now. Um, other than One that, I say good luck. First 90 days wasn't so bad. I'm, I'm happy to be in a place where uh, things are getting better. Things are getting better and better every day. And uh, we just need these fuel prices to go down and we'll be all right, you know. Getting good rates, I haven't, we haven't been getting anything less than two, 30. It used to be where you could take a dollar seventy, a dollar eighty, but really two dollars is the bare minimum now. Like you really can't not take two dollars. But we've been doing um, nothing less than two thirty, which is I'm very, I'm very happy about. It's just gonna get better and better from here because now we're ninety days, we got more options. Yeah. So that's it for now. Um, I'm pretty much still waiting around. I got about another hour before I can uh, drop this load off. I'm gonna go ahead and head over there in the next 45 minutes. And then, you know, I'll drop this load off. I'll get the B-roll of that. And then I'll just catch y'all in the next one. Y'all comment below and let me know what y'all first 30 days, 60 days, 90 days was like. Um, any advice you have for me or anyone else, uh, either going forward the next 90 days or people who are just getting started, um, put it in the comments below and let me know your thoughts as always. And uh, I'll catch y'all in the next video.
All right, y'all. So, I'm sure you're looking at this like, what the fuck is he doing? Forgot to mention that this is a driver assist. And as y'all can see, these pallets are really long. So, I'm just winging it, really, to be honest. I'm just winging it. So, <laughs> watch me, watch me work.